Okay, in this video I want to do uh, an example using the binomial probability function, or what's sometimes called um, a binomial distribution. To use a binomial distribution we have to have a few requirements met. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to have n repeated identical independent trials. Um, there's only going to be two outcomes. Usually we'll, we'll consider one to be a success and the other to be a failure. So just notation, the probability of success we'll label with little p. The probability of failure will be q. Again, notice if you add up the probability of success plus the probability of failure, you get 1. It says, well then, if you want to calculate the probability that there'll be exactly x successes, in those n trials, it says we use the formula n choose x times p to the x times q to the quantity n minus x. So remember n choose x, um, here's at least one other alternate notation for it. And remember that's n factorial over n minus r factorial and then r factorial. So I have videos on factorials and combinations, so you may want to take a look at that. Because um, I will step through, I think, the factorials a little faster in this video. Okay, so here's our problem here. You're going to take a multiple choice test um, that has 10 questions on it, and each question is going to have five answer choices, you know, A, B, C, D, or E. And we're going to calculate the probability that you get exactly four questions correct just by guessing. Okay, so in this case, the probability of success getting a question correct, well, if there's five answer choices total, and I only have, um, I've got to pick one of those, the probability of success will simply be a fifth. Um, therefore, the probability of failure, well, getting the question incorrect, must be four-fifths. Okay, so again, let me jot my formula down. So it says the probability of getting x successes is going to be n choose x, um, p to the x and then q to the n minus x. So there's our formula. So in this case we want to find the probability of us finding exactly, so we said four questions correct. So we'll plug four in. Okay, and this is where we have to be a little careful. So um, just plugging everything in correctly. Um, so n is the total number of trials, or in this case, it's the total number of questions that you have to answer. So there's 10 questions total, and we want to answer four of those correctly. Again, the probability of getting a question answered correctly, the probability of success, that's 1 -fifth. Then it says we need the number of successes as the exponent. Well, we want four successes. Um, that is, we want to get four questions correct. And then we take the probability of failure, which is four-fifths. And then it says we take the total number of trials, which is 10, minus the number of successes, um, which in this problem, again, is four. OK, so now everything is basically set up. It's just a matter of grinding all of this down and getting a nice little compact answer. Um, a couple things, okay, well first off, 10 minus 4, that's just 6. And, <clears throat> excuse me, notice this number, these, these exponents will always add up to the number of trials. Because again, you're getting 4 successes, 6 failures, and well, you're doing it 10 times total. So, um, let's grind this lovely thing down and get an answer. And that's really it. And again, we could uh, view, view these as independent trials because if you guess one problem correctly, that really has no impact on whether or not you get an, uh, the next problem answered correctly. So, okay, so the formula for 10 choose 4 that says we take 10 factorial, it says we take the difference 10 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. Again, we have 1 over 5. Uh, raised to the fourth power. We have 4 over 5 raised to the sixth power. Um, so let's see, this is 10 factorial over 6 factorial, so that will cancel out and leave with 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. 4 factorial, well that's 4 times 3 times 2. Um, I'm going to cheat here and use a calculator. So let's see, 1 fifth raised to the fourth power which is just 0 .0016. Okay, we probably 
uh, could have got that one. Four fifths, let's see, so 0.8 raised to the sixth power, that'll be 0.262144. Okay, so four times two, that'll cancel out with the eight. Three will go into nine three times. 10 times three is 30 times seven is 210. So the, the 10 choose 4 simplifies down to just 210. And again, now we just have to multiply all of these numbers together. And this will be the probability of you, again, answering exactly 4 out of 10 problems correctly. So let's see what we get. Probably intuitively not going to be very likely. Okay, so I'm getting this to be the number 0 0.08808, da da da. Okay, so we can round that off to 0 0.09, which is a 9% likelihood. So it says there's about a 9% chance that if you go in there and guess at this test that you're going to get exactly 4 correct, or you're going to make maybe a 40% on the test. So, All right, that's all there is to really using this formula. You just have to think about the total number of trials, how many successes you want, the probability of success, the probability of failure. And then I think for most people, just kind of simplifying down the factorials can be, uh, be a little tedious. Uh, most scientific calculators or, or um, business calculators, uh, a lot of them ha even have a program built in to, to compute those for you to make it easy. So, all right, um, I hope this video helps. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to post them as always.